today we're doing a special topic on healthy aging essentials. So um, part of our research and what we do is we try to um, think about topics that are relevant to us and things that we're curious about or things that we really want to learn more about and we research that. So today we have a great topic on things that we can do to help us age gracefully and um, help us to live a long and productive life. So my name's Elva and um, this is my aunt Nora. And uh, <laughs> we don't live in the same state, but we certainly come together each week just to tape a um, quick session on some topics that are relevant to us. And so we're going to actually have a little quiz, Nora. I hope you're ready with a little pen and paper. It's not hard. It's not anything you have to know in advance. It's just kind of an assessment of where you are um, on healthy essentials. So I've rated myself and I'll kind of share that with you as we go along. So let's get started. So first of all, um, aging essentials, they, it just refers to like factors or elements that um, contribute to maintaining good health and our well-being as we grow older. So there's just six of them and I'll certainly list them all in the description as well. But let's get started. So for the first one was physical health. And that's really about engaging in regular exercise, you know, cardiovascular activities such as walking, swimming, cycling. Um, all the research said that 150 minutes a week of moderate aerobic activity, such as like a brisk walk or something like that was good for you. Um, or you could just step it up a little bit and do 75 minutes of vigorous activity, such as running or swimming laps or something like that. Um, they also talked about, of course, strength training. And I know everybody talks about that because as we get older, we start to lose some of our muscle and um, and also, you know, our, 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 our bone structure can change as well. So they talked about using weights or resistance bands and actually just said two days a week and that you should try to concentrate on all the different groups, you know, arms, legs, core, stuff like that. But just even 12 to 15 reps of uh, weights that are are challenging. So when you're getting to 12 to 15 reps, you are pretty much like done with that. Um, but everything was about being consistent, doing this on a regular basis, you know, two days a week, every week, uh, working out the 150 minutes a week, every week, of course. Um, and then some flexibility exercises as well, stretching and toning and, you know, yoga, something like that. Um, but those are important as well as we grow older. So of course I wanted to kind of think about like, why is this important? Why is it so important to exercise? Because sometimes a fan, I'm a fan, sometimes I'm not. It depends how busy or what a priority I make uh, of it in my life. So it really talked about a couple of things. I'll just read them real quick. Controls weight, uh, combats health conditions and diseases, boosts your HDL, which is good cholesterol, uh, helps you decrease your triglycerides, lowers the risk of cardiovascular disease, it helps you prevent strokes, high blood pressure, type two diabetes, depression, and some types of cancer. And it can improve your mood, your energy, um, your sleep, and it's fun. If you like, I've gone to some Zumba classes and they are a lot of fun. Um, and so, yeah, you have to pick an exercise or something that you love to do, because then it will add to, it'll make it easier to do, obviously. Um, the second part of the physical health piece was eating a balanced diet. Uh, and I think we all always talk about that and think about that. But it really talked about increasing the number of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, and of course, healthy fats that we eat. So I was thinking really strongly about that. And I felt like, okay, my whole grains, I'm not really sure I do a good job there. So I researched that further and found that that is really um really important to actually help with lowering cholesterol and of course, good source of fiber, vitamins, minerals. And the vitamins were pretty amazing. Um, this is the good thing about the whole grains. They're providing you vitamin A, vitamin B. In fact, it was B1, B2, B3, B9, um, vitamin E, iron, magnesium, phosphorus. I mean, things that sometimes we don't realize that we're not getting if we're not eating. Um, our whole grains, but this is really important. So some of the things it said was maybe to try to replace like one or two items at a time with whole grain. So instead of eating, you know, regular non whole grain bread, try that one time, you know, buy some whole grain bread. Um, and then also 
pasta. They sell whole grain pasta now. And I have tried that and it's pretty good. I don't really notice a big difference. Some, it's a little bit uh, thicker, but um, it's pretty good. It, you really couldn't even notice the difference. Um, I knew the difference, of course, uh, but I think that's a good, simple way to try, you know, something different. And then the last part of the um, of this physical health was getting a good amount of sleep. And they recommend seven to nine hours per night. Um, of course, we've all heard this. They recommend turning off electronic devices, our TV, our phone, et cetera, one hour before bedtime to help us relax and get ready for bed. I will tell you, I had really bad sleep um, about a year ago. I couldn't sleep at night. I was up like two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, just could not sleep. And then I started taking um, magnesium and that helped me tremendously. Now, nothing, I do not take any sleep aids because I've heard that those are even worse um, sometimes to take, but that helped me a lot. I could then sleep again. So I, I highly recommend that. Now, what we're going to do, Nora, real quick is we're going to kind of rate, and you guys can do this at home that are watching, just rate where you are in these three areas. So let's start with uh, engaging in regular exercise. And this is like, you know, from one to a hundred percent, where do you think oh, wow. on the spectrum? Where do I think I'm at? Yeah. I do stretch. I don't do yoga and I don't like to actually put down a mat or anything. I kind of do the lazy stretch, but I do do it in bed when I'm waking up because yeah, I, I need to stretch my back. That yeah. is what I think at my age at 62, that's what I feel the most pain in, if you will. Okay. So I stretch my back, you know, just kind of twisting and turning for a little bit in bed. And that actually helps. That's, that's what good. I do. Yeah. So where would I be from one to a hundred? Is that what you said? That's a, yeah. that's a grand scale. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe 70. I don't know. <laughs> that's well, really. So are you doing any type of um, moderate aerobic exercise? Are you taking any walks? Are you doing anything swimming? Anything like that? No. Okay. And then yeah, are, are you doing any weight training? Are you lifting any weights or anything like that? Yeah. Okay. No. No. All right. I work at home and I pretty much sit all day. I have set what I've done now is I've set it like a, an alarm on my phone, which does make me get up. Um, supposedly, if you get up at least every 25 minutes for at least five minutes and those five minutes, you're doing something, whether it's loading or unloading the dishwasher, you yep. know, making your bed real quick, you know, whatever it is, feeding the, your pets, you know, that's something. So I do do that now. I, you know, yes. I've set that timer and every 25 minutes, I just, I get up for five minutes. That's good. And that's better than sitting all day. Cause they say the yes. sitting, sitting all day is the new smoking. And that's, that's pretty bad. Now yes. my job too, I'm quite uh, active. I'm up, I have groups that I lead. So I take them on tours and then I present to groups and then we do a project activity. So we're on our feet, you know, the whole time, but they're not there every day. So some days I'm yeah. sitting and just working for, or I'm in meetings yeah, uh, I think those but, of us that work from home, it, mm -hmm. it's really tough. I know friends because I work from home. So what I did purchase uh, not too long ago was a stand up desk, which kind of oh, goes wow. up and down. Mm -hmm. And so that helps me and I make sure to stand for at least an hour in the morning and an hour in the afternoon. I don't know if that's a lot, but it's something I feel like, okay, I'm contributing, contributing to, to my better health, if you will. So yeah, definitely. It does not qualify for exercising though, because you're not doing right any type of heavy breathing, you're not doing moderate aerobic activity or vigorous aerobic activity. So probably, um, I'll, I'll be honest, I rated myself very low because I'm not doing, I do stretches as well. I do some okay. leg stretches before I get up and it's for my back as well. So I usually bring uh, my knee to my chest and hold it there. Then I bring both knees to my chest. I alternate. That's um, exactly what I do. Yeah, yeah. but I, I don't consider that any exercise, really. It's just stretching. But it does help. It does oh, it help. Helps. It helps with, yes, yeah, yeah. stretching definitely is yeah. important. So I would, I rated myself at about a 33% level only because um, I guess I've been kind of working on eating a balanced diet other than the whole grains. I had, I've cut out all my bread. Um, rarely do I eat pasta um, unless it's a very special occasion. And I've only been doing this for about the last two months. Um, but I have lost, I've lost probably between 10 and 15 pounds. So I feel good about that. Um, but from an exercise standpoint, I fall off very easily. I forget to, to exercise or I, uh, I did go to, we have a mountain close to our home and I ran the mountain, um, last Saturday. And basically there's a, there's a 
path up to the top or you can go through the trails and it, the path goes all the way around the mountain to the very top. Um, it takes about 45 minutes to go all the way up and then um, down. It's a little faster because you got the momentum helping you go down a little faster. So <laughs> we don't but, have any mountains in San Antonio, Texas, but, uh, but that's yeah, okay. You can go tough. outside and walk your dog yeah. you can, yeah. and you can do exercise yeah. inside your house too. They don't, it doesn't have to be outside. That's true. As long as you wait till the sun goes down, because it's only like 106 degrees. Oh, you, you know, in the, morning. in the day, so it's it's rather hot. Yeah, you go in the morning, and you can also go like well. If you go in the morning, you can go outside, and it's quieter, it's cooler, or you have to join a gym, I guess. Now, the the cool thing yeah. about when they talked about the uh, the, the hundred fifty minutes or the seventy five minutes of activity, you know, I was thinking even that mountain. Um, and I said I ran it, but I actually walked up it pretty aggressively, fast, and then ran down. Um, it's still the whole activity took me about an hour and a half to do. That's so pretty good. Yeah. A lot good. of exercise. It's hard. And you're doing that every day? No, I wish. No. Oh. no. Oh. Uh, the mountain, I mean, it's open every day and I could go after work is a really good idea because it's not as hot here as probably Texas is, but um, it's close to my job. So I'm thinking if I probably make it a routine to go right after work instead of coming home for dinner, I could do something like that. But really, if I think about the number of minutes, now those minutes are probably just to maintain uh, the 150 minutes because um, the last time I saw my doctor for my checkup, she said 300 minutes. And that was probably Ooh. more like weight loss. So it depends yeah. on where you are, what you're trying to achieve. Um, yeah. Honestly, I mean, our your score uh, is different. My score probably, and people at home, that their score will be different too. Um, the score really just means that We've got some improvement to do. Obviously, we need to of course into our life. Yeah. That's what's important about that. Yeah. Uh, then number. Let's go on to uh, and definitely sleep is a big part of it, as we talked about. And that that it was sleep a is a tough one. I know that you know past fifty. Now I'm sixty two, and I have trouble sleeping. Last night I did not sleep. I was up at two in the morning. I was watching the news and I watched you know just different shows. I could not go to sleep and I had to do everything to stop myself from getting up to coming to the refrigerator and having a snack because I thought, well, if I have a snack, I'll fall asleep. So, but anyway, yeah, no, sleep is, is difficult, but I'm like you, I don't want to take any sleep aids, but no. I do find that when I have more activity during the day, Absolutely. I am able to sleep better. Yes. Which is another thing they said about exercise. The more you exercise, the better you sleep. So you probably need to, even if you, and you don't want to exercise right before bedtime, but you want to put some exercise into your day. And they said you could even break up your exercise. So let's say you have a half hour for lunch or an hour for lunch. Half hour probably is, is normal. You could go outside or do something around your house that would help you even doing jumping jacks for 10 minutes um, during your morning break or your morning stand up time. And then lunchtime, do another 10 minutes, do some push ups too, something like that. All of those will get your heart, you know, going, especially the jumping jacks and stuff like that. So, um, but no, sleep definitely. I had the issue before I started taking magnesium. So I take a my magnesium vitamin and that has helped tremendously. So I highly encourage you to do that or do some other research on how to help you yeah. sleep better. But that's what I did last year. I researched it and found magnesium. So um, I, I take one every day. I rated myself on sleep at about 75%. I get about seven hours. I do think I go to sleep a little bit late. I go to sleep about midnight most days and I'm wow. getting seven or 7.30 if I don't have to be in until like nine. Um, but I would like to get up earlier because I want to find that time to go out and walk more. So I know now that means I'm gonna have to go to bed like an hour earlier and I have to be asleep by yeah. instead of midnight. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and the, I was doing like 10, 30, 11, and then I don't know why, somehow we pushed it back to 11, 30 now and turning off TV somewhere between 11, 30 and midnight, but I still feel like I take a few minutes to fall asleep. Um, I've watched- That's really late. late. Now, I've I am in eight. bed by like eight o'clock. You know, I may not fall asleep until like 8, 30 or nine, but I'm already in bed watching TV, oh. just kind of relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's, that's early for me, but, but that's good for you. Definitely. If that works and maybe that's why you're waking up at, you know, two or three, maybe it maybe could be a little too early. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway, so where are you on sleep? What, what did you rate yourself there? I would be bad on sleep. I'd be down to like maybe 25. I, I'm really bad. I don't sleep well. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't nap during the day, so I don't catch up on my sleep. Yeah, that's hard Ever. work. Definitely. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Well, these are all parts of aging well is, um, you know, and the sleep part, they went into so many details about, um, you know, all the things that happen when you're asleep. In fact, um, let me just show you that real quick. Tell you that. It said that it strengthens your heart. It regulates your blood sugar. Um, it reduces stress levels, maintains, helps you maintain your healthy weight. You actually, if you don't get good rest, and they said people that don't sleep enough actually have issues with their weight as well. Um, it can improve your balance, your alertness, your energy, your memory. And also while you sleep, you your body repairs its tissues. So it's so important to have a good rest every night. So you got to work on that. Um, you know, let, let me know, try the magnesium. It's really good. And it's been really effective for me. Definitely. So I do take a multivitamin. I'll have to check and see if it's got the magnesium in it. No, I, I guess I'll have to magnesium. check on that. Yeah. You need an actual magnesium vitamin. Definitely. All right. So let's move on. So that was number one. And that was just physical health. Again, that was exercise, um, eating a balanced diet and a sleep it was physical health. The number two goes into mental and emotional well-being uh, and prioritizing our mental health. And it really talked about engaging in activities that stimulate your mind, um, such as doing puzzles and reading and learning new skills, volunteering. Of course, we both still have jobs that uh, obviously that challenges yeah. us as well. Um, right. But if you have to find activities that are fun also that really like brain teasers are very popular with older people, crossword puzzles and all that because you have to really use a different portion of your brain or, or use your brain period to do some of these things. So um, that's something that I don't do. I used to do some word puzzles, but I have stopped and I haven't done them in a while, but I want to pick some back up and do some of those as well. Well, um, I did hear something as a matter of fact today, and they were talking about, you know, the brain and the brain is a muscle, just yeah. like your arms and your legs. So if you don't use that muscle, guess yeah. what? You know, it's, it's just not, it's not going to work as well. So it's very important to continue to use that muscle. So right. for us, we still work. So, mm, so we still have that stimulation from work and so forth. But for anyone who's not working anymore, who's lucky enough to already be retired, you know, it's not a bad idea to take a class. And mm -hmm. the class doesn't have to be on economics. The class can be on quilting, yeah. but you're stimulating your brain as to, you know, learning how to do that. Because yes. th that would be a struggle for me. I don't know how to, you know, do any of that. But but mm -hmm. anyway, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, definitely. You're right. And that's something that I think we both have. We both have a love for learning. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I watch a couple podcasts for entertainment, but I watch double the number on education, like these topics and stuff like that. I spend hours of time researching before we do our show because I want to be informed. I want to make smart decisions um, and you know, these topics matter to me. So I watch a lot of great podcasts that talk about, um, not only our health, but, um, lots of different financial resources, ever, anything that seems interesting to me, uh, I'll watch a podcast on it. And I've, i am learned something new every time I watch something and, um, I just pack it away in my memory for one of our shows. So, um, but they also talked about practicing relaxation techniques, such as deep breathing, um, meditation. I actually tried meditation. I wouldn't say I was good at it, but I watched a meditation uh, video the other day, and it said that it, probably it's good to start with guided meditation. So someone's actually leading you through the meditation process of how to do it until you get you build up the skill and you know how to do it um, better on your I, I I did that and I could not build up the skill. And I had, you know, a guided meditation. And I, I don't know, I think I just needed to to give it more time. But for me, I was trying to meditate and trying to basically you're not really thinking about anything. You're just trying to, you know, medicate meditate and relax. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it didn't work for me. No, I started doing about my grocery list and things that I need well, that's, to do and my laundry. And I was like, okay, this is not working. Well, that's common. And that's common. And that's why they say it's important to go through a guided meditation because they teach you how to do meditation because you're right. Your mind can wander very quickly. Um, but through the guided meditation, they teach you, they, they have, you know, different ways of teaching you how to stay focused and 
not to let your, or if your mind does wander, then you bring it back to, you know, a central, I think there's like a yeah. mantra you can say or a noise. That's that exactly know. what they said. But I realized that meditation was not for me because it's not for everybody. Yeah. It was not for me. It didn't, yeah. it didn't, you know, work well with me, with my personality. It didn't go. So, yeah, I think you have to give things to a, a try. I mean, I think you have to, you can't just try it once and think, okay, I'm not good at that. You know, thinking about how, when we learned how to ride a bicycle, it probably took us many attempts to do it you know first we thought i'll never learn but then you you end up learning so um but not it, you're right it's not for everybody it's not some, not something you mm -hmm. like but it definitely is something that's so highly rated and people talk about how much it's such a stress reliever and we're always going to have stress in our life whether we're working or not we're still going to have stress so um, right it's something it's important def definitely to do and also staying positive um i think that they talked a lot about your mindset, um, if you're looking at everything, you know, negatively or trying to keep everything not, not, you know, just, you know, in a fake way to be thinking everything's perfect, not like that, but just thinking about, you know, being gra grateful for what you have, not worrying about what you don't have. Um, right. That kind of effort. And, and somebody had an analogy that I thought was really cool. And they said, think about when you're driving your car, how big your front window is compared to your rear view mirror. And it's like, because the lesson in that was um, it's better to be looking forward and thinking about your future or where you're going or where you're headed um, versus looking back at the past or looking behind. Absolutely. It. So yeah. that's kind of yeah. where that staying positive comes. Because we can obviously think about, you know what, I had a better job 20 years ago. I, you know, I looked better 20 years, you know, whatever. We can't change any yeah. of that. We are where yeah. we are and we have to right. be happy with where we are. And Absolutely. Uh, focus on that. And that's why yeah. all of this is going to help us to live our best life. So, yeah, exactly. Because it's it's just absolutely a waste of time to look yeah. back and think, you know, I should have done this or I should have done that. It's over. It's gone. It's in the past, you know. Mm -hmm. So we need to look forward, just like you said, and, yeah. and be grateful for where we're at. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I uh, rated myself at about 80% I show here. I think that's at 80. Yeah, 80%. Because I feel like I do, I do a lot of work to try to, again, watching a lot of great podcasts that help me to um, do a lot of mental health wellness. I wasn't there, you know, a year ago. I remember not working and not being um, as happy or as mentally balanced as I am today. But I think having my job that I go to every day has helped me to have more of a purpose in life and. Um, feel better about what I do. So, and that could be a little bit later that we're going to talk about that too. But, but anyway, um, where would you, where are you rating yourself on that mental and emotional well being? I, I uh, actually, I'm going to rate myself high there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say I'm probably 85%. Okay. Yeah. Good. good. Mm -hmm. Very important. Good. I like that. All right. Um, preventative care was number three on the list. And it talked about, you know, doing regular checkups screenings, vaccinations, you know, following the medical advice of whatever doctor you see, um, but really just taking care of yourself, not not waiting until you feel horrible to go in and see a doctor because it could be too late. You could have, you now could have something really worse that they could have caught, you know, years ago with your, during an annual checkup. So um, I think this is sometimes it's hard for men to think that they need an annual checkup. We're used to it because I think we were always having to see a gynecologist every year. Um, but sometimes men are a little more hesitant about doing that, but it's for everyone. And I think you have to go in and get regular checkups. Preventative care is better than, like I said, waiting until you're really sick to go and seek um, help because it could be too late by then. So that's important. And I rated myself really high on that. I said 95% because I do have yearly uh, checkups, appointments, blood work. I think it's so important. Um, I do as well. Yeah, okay, I'm good. right there. With, yes, good. I do as well. Wonderful. Uh, number four was healthy lifestyle choices. And that was avoiding smoking, limited alcohol consumption, maintaining a healthy weight, um, all contributes to your overall health and reduces the risk of chronic disease and illnesses. And um, I rated myself there at 75% because I haven't been in the best shape I could be my entire life. Um, I'm really focused on it right now. And I know that I'll reach 
the healthy goal weight that I want to be. And then I'll con not feel like, okay, now it's over. Now that diet's over. Now I'm going to go back to eating normal. No, I mean, my new normal is being a healthy eater. So I, um, I have work to do there, but I am happy that I do not smoke. And I've also stopped drinking alcohol. I feel like there's no purpose for it really in my life anymore. And I'm not saying I will never have a drink again, but it'll be for a special occasion, like New Year's Eve, a glass of champagne or something. What about you? Uh, yeah, I have work to do as far as my weight. Um, as far as drinking, um, I don't drink, you know, I drink on the weekends. I do drink. I, I do enjoy a cocktail on the weekends. I'm not going to lie. So I do. Um, but yeah, I do have, you know, I need to work on my weight. That is for sure. But um, I'm trying. Um, number five was social connections. And that was really talking about having strong ties with family and friends and community, um, you know, having people that you can hang out with, uh, have, mm -hmm. laugh with, et cetera. And so yeah. that, that's so important uh, to, to continue our health, uh, our aging process to age uh, well. And then the last one is financial security is really talking about planning for retirement, uh, managing your resources, making sure you have medical insurance, even though that it's costly and it definitely is, um, but it's so important as we age that we continue to be able to have that, that will help us in case obviously something does happen in our future and we have to rely on our medical insurance for that. Right. So I think overall um, this was really like a holistic approach to saying, how can I be my best self? You know, what are the things that I can do? What am I doing right now? What are the things, my areas of improvement? And that's kind of what I've been researching because like I said, I'm um, really dedicated to being, you know, obviously I'm 61. I know that it metabolism changes as we get older. So we have to do everything we can to try to steer it in the right direction um, before we all of a sudden wake up and say, oh my gosh, you know, I've in this last year I've gained, you know, 50 pounds and then the next year, another 50. And then the next, you know, it's like, no, we can, we can control this. We just have to put in some effort. So that's really sure. it for today. I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, this is a great topic and I hope that you'll share with us where you are in your journey. I'm going to challenge all of you and myself to get out there and let's start doing some exercise. Let's start with one day a week trying to do something. If you don't have weights at home, that's fine. Just use some cans or, you know, a jug of milk or something like that. Do one on our arm at a time if you need to, um, or do some resistance, you know, like stand near a wall and push yourself away doing um, some push-ups with the wall, you know, or your counter. Or if you have stairs, climb your stairs. That's a really good exercise. I do that quite a bit here at home. So, um, but anything and everything helps. And then leave us a comment. Let us know what are the things you're doing to be your best self. And we look forward to seeing everybody again next week. We'll have a new topic. And um, that's it. Signing off from here. Nora, you have anything else you want to say? That's it. Have a great uh, weekend. <laughs> All right, don't forget to like and share our video and subscribe if you haven't already. We look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you, friends. Bye-bye.